All right, so the first section we're going to be going over is around design and implementing M365 services. And our first module is going to be on managing domains. Now, in order for us to manage domains, we have to understand how to add and configure those domains. So when you initialize a Microsoft 365 subscription for the very first time, you will provision a .onmicrosoft.com domain. That is a default domain that is part of the subscription. However, if you own a subscription, or, or rather a domain, through a domain registration service like GoDaddy or another third party, and have that domain associated with a business, like businessname.com or businessname.org, you can configure those additional domains against a subscription through the admin center. Now, you have to own the domain you're adding. You can't just go in and add a domain that you don't own, like Google or Amazon or something like that. And as I mentioned, you can purchase a domain via the admin center if you wish. Now, once those domains are configured, they will show up as an option for the resources that you deploy and the users that you assign in the subscription. Now we're going to go ahead and take a moment and demonstrate on how to add and configure domains. All right, so as you can see here, I'm logged in to just a standard web browser. And in order for me to be able to log into the administration center or the admin center for short, you can do a couple of different things. One is go to office.com. It helps if I can type. at which point it will log you in or prompt you for an authentication. In this case, I'm single sign-on, so I've got my admin center tile here, and I will click on that. Now, this is just a demo tenant, so there's not a lot of workloads in here. However, in order for me to set up the domain, I can do a couple of different things. I can click the setup link here and do a connect domain there, or click the show all, drop down the new setup, in the admin center and go to settings domains as you can see I already have a skylines ms 100.com domain set up through the GoDaddy service which is where I purchased the domain from or I can just do a click add domain here and go through the verification steps now since I've already added one I'm just gonna go ahead and start the setup there now as you can see in this screen there's a couple of different options you can go through to verify domain ownership since the SkylinesMS100.com domain is registered through GoDaddy, the Office 365 service knows this and says, hey, we already know it's a GoDaddy domain name. Why don't we go ahead and have you just log in with your GoDaddy credentials and we'll verify the domain that way. Or you can do a verification email where it essentially sends you a email message saying, hey, we've seen somebody attempt to register this domain. Please prove that this is you and validate it through your email, which does a who is look up and does the verification there. Or you can do a text record that you insert on the GoDaddy end, and that's the option we're going to check today. So we'll select that radio button, we'll select next, and as you can see, the verify domain window shows up with a text value that you can just copy and then go to your GoDaddy service and add a text value that way. So there's our value, there's our name, and then our TTL is 3600, which is an hour. Understand that TTL is in seconds. What we will do is we will hit a save button there. And as you can see, there's our new text record. We're gonna hit a verify. And as you can see there, it went through and verified the domain ownership. Now, for DNS updated settings, this wizard is going to go through and say you have one of two options. You can manually add the DNS records yourself and identify which workloads you want to set up Office 365 on through DNS, or since GoDaddy is the DNS hosting provider, sign in and let GoDaddy update your records. At the end of the day, there's a variety of different domain name service records or DNS records that we have to establish in order for workloads to work with the new registered domain. 
Otherwise, it's going to default to the onmicrosoft.com domain, which is fine, but for business organizations and enterprises that want to tie their digital identity in the form of their domain name to the subscription, this is a step that you're going to need to complete. So for the purpose of this demonstration, we'll go ahead and add the DNS records automatically by the GoDaddy service, and then it's going to identify the online services here. Now, really what this is doing for us is it's adding the mail exchange or MX record for the exchange service, the Skype for Business text records for the Skype for Business and Teams online service, as well as the mobile device management for Intune for Office 365, which has a couple of different DNS records as well. So as you can see here, this initiates a request to the DNS registrar for authorization. It goes through, validates it, updates the DNS records, tells you that it's completed, and then we can go in, update DNS, which is completed, and now you can see here that the default has changed. And as a result, there is our mail exchange record. There's our text record for the SPF record. We've got our link CNAME alias records, canonical name CNAME records, for the SIP and link discovery services, as well as the federation services for the Skype for Business service, and the mobile device management for the enterprise integration and enterprise enrollment address records. Now we can verify this by just doing a simple refresh on our GoDaddy page. And as you can see here, all of our domain records that the wizard just completed for us are now inserted. Now for the purpose of the exam, you don't need to understand exactly how to configure the records. You should understand, however, what records are necessary for the purpose of the DNS and domain registration process for the Office 365 service. And that concludes this demonstration. That was a pretty straightforward demonstration, I hope. Now our next section is going to cover down on DNS records specifically. Since we talked so much about DNS and configuring and adding a domain to the M365 service, I think it's important that we take a moment and pause and understand how important DNS is to the M365 service. So take a look at this table here really quick and understand all of the different record types that are affiliated with various services, not just M365 services, because DNS just set, plays such a critical role to networking services as a whole. A couple of things to note here are your typical A records or hostname records, MX records or mail exchange records, which are used to route and handle SMTP message transfer to the Exchange Online service to other mailboxes. The text records used to protect unsolicited emails, which is part of the SPF's uh, Center Policy Framework records, as well as typical service records or SRV records. Now these are generally tied to other services like Active Directory and Identity Federation solutions, so that various protocols and services that can require communication to DNS are working correctly. So users and groups and other workloads deployed in the M365 service can now be mapped against the registered domain within the admin center. As you saw in the demonstration, the domain that we established, the skylinesms100.com domain, became the default domain, which means any additional workloads or groups that we deploy into the M365 service can now leverage and utilize that domain as its alias. So if I create a user J Smith, J Smith is now going to have a domain instead of that the on Microsoft.com domain, it'll now be J Smith at skylinesms100.com which for businesses that's a good thing because it associates the identity of that organization with that user and that workload. Now it doesn't have to be that way for every object that's created. You can do this within existing objects and modify them or leave them as is to their defaulted previous setting on the onmicrosoft.com domain as well. So as you saw in the demonstration you can set up default primary domain which is what we did in the demo which is automatically used when new objects are going to be created in M365. Now in order for us to do this, it is important to note that you must be a global admin and hold the global admin role in the M365 service in order for this to work. 
if you do not have the global admin role, you will not be able to proceed and add a default primary domain. So the rest of these steps here are covering down on the specific steps that we covered in our demonstration. And lastly, our demonstration here is going to showcase user and workload management from a domain management standpoint inside of Office 365. Okay, so from a workload standpoint, we're going to start our demonstration off by looking at the Exchange service, since domain naming and DNS in general is pretty critical to ensuring proper mail flow within the Exchange Online service. So as you can see, we're right where we left off in our previous domain, and then what we're going to do is expand to our various admin centers down here and click on the Exchange Admin Center. Now, what that's going to do is that's going to open up specifically its own administration center for all Exchange Online services, which you can see we're at a centralized dashboard for all of the different things we can do within Exchange, from recipient management to assigning permissions and setting rules within the organization around mail flow. And as you can see under the mail flow column, we have this link for accepted domain. So we're going to click that. You're going to see that the SkylinesMS100.com domain is already set as an authoritative domain. Now, if you can go back to our previous demonstration, and when we went through that motion of registering with GoDaddy for the various DNS records setup, part of that process in establishing that MX record told the Exchange Online service to make this an authoritative record. And we can verify that by simply double-clicking it and seeing that the record is here and that it is an authoritative record, meaning that email is delivered to the valid recipients in this service or in this organization and that any email that is not known for a recipient is going to be rejected by the service. And more importantly, this checkbox is checked saying that this is the default domain for the organization. So now that we've verified that the Exchange Online service shows the default domain for the new domain that we've just added, we're going to go back to our admin center, which up here is just the previous tab. And we're going to add a user, and you're going to see how we can set the domain and manipulate the email addresses for that new user. So I'm going to go in and add a new user. And in this case, I'm just going to create a name here for that user, say John Smith. And the display name can simply just be John Smith, and the username will be J Smith. And you can see here under the registration, I've got the two options, the initialized default dot on Microsoft.com domain and the new default SkylinesMS100.com domain. Now for the purpose of the demonstration, I'm just going to provide a basic password here, but not too basic. Security is important, you know. And then I'm going to hit next. And as you see on this screen here, it's asking me to assign a user license. Now I've got a bunch of demonstration licenses that I can assign to this user to ensure that they have the necessary applications that they need. And I can verify that by, after assigning a license, seeing the number of apps that are presented down here at the bottom. And I can expand further on that and see the different types of applications and services that they're going to have access to as part of being assigned that license. Furthermore, if I want to assign any additional roles and responsibilities to this user, I can do that here. I'm going to give them a standard user access, which gives them no administrative or privileged rights or roles, which for the purpose of this demonstration is just fine. So as you can see, the wizard goes through the process, finishes adding the user, and as you can see here, their default domain for their email address is skylinesms100.com. So as you can see here, we've created the user. The user is now displayed with the skylinesms100.com, but you notice something different. My initial alias and account that was created when we established the subscription still shows a skylinesms100.onmicrosoft.com domain. And that may be the case for existing workloads in the subscription after you add a new domain and change the default. So what we're going to do now is we're going to modify my account and change the default domain for the mail flow to the other domain. So all I've done at this point is I've edited the existing account, looked at the manage username, clicked that link, and as you can see now, the other domain is going to be populated. I'll save that change. It's going to have me re-authenticate, and then I'm going to go back in. Helps if you know your password. So I'm back in. So I'm going to go back here, refresh my office window, go back into the admin center, go under active users, 
And there's my username. Under my account, my email aliases, I can now add a new alias for the new Skylines MS. So, for example, organizations may have a user principal name or a UPN name or even a SIP address name that's associated with a Teams or Skype link. And some organizations may have a naming convention like first name dot last name. So that's what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a first name dot last name at skylinesms100.com. I'm going to save the change and it's going to apply it that way. And it's going to update the mail object and say, hey, there's a couple of aliases here that you can send mail to. And that's it. We've configured a new domain, we've configured workloads for the Exchange service, and we've manipulated user workloads with the new domain name and service.